Okay, so today we're going to be going over a uh, sparse matrix. And what this really is, is a way of um, entering a really large matrix in um, a program, say like C, Java, or um, MATLAB. But it's really, it's a really big waste if you have a matrix like this and there's a whole bunch of zeros everywhere because then you're wasting memory and what it does the calculation it's just going through zeros and it's gonna say it's gonna waste a lot more time so this could also be good for solving partial differential equations and a whole bunch of other stuff so if we go into programs such as MATLAB what we could do is type help sparse and here you could read all the different things how you could use sparse matrix and how like you enter in uh, data so let's say for example we have a matrix let's call it M and it has a 1 2 0 and a 4 and MATLAB will write it out like this but if we want to save memory and not write out that 0 we could do um, m is equal to sparse m and now we'll say uh, row 1 column 1 has a 1 row 1 column 2 has a 2 and row 2 column 2 has a 4 and notice that it doesn't say uh, there's no uh, row 2 column 1 because there's only a 0 so it doesn't need to write anything you could use sparse matrices in uh, even larger matrix say like the upper triangular of um, of all pies of a 10 by 10 matrix so that will look like this but instead of using all these zeros everywhere we can use half the amount of memory by using m is equal to and now we have all these cells which use only half the amount of memory so what's cool about um, using this is that you could still use all the matrix operations so you could add add two matrices together uh, multiply them by the inverse uh, just like before but now it's just a little bit faster so even if we had this matrix A and we multiplied it by this column vector B we'll get A times B and that's 5, 22, and 27 but if we want to find say A sparse is equal to sparse of A we'll get this column and then we could still do the same multiplication A sparse times B and we still get 5, 22, and 27 uh, there's more than just one way to get a sparse matrix like before what we did was just got a full matrix and input it into sparse and then it did all the conversion for us but if we wanted to uh, input it without typing out all those zeros we could do this and say input the the rows which columns which values and the size of the matrix into sparse it'll do all the calculation for you so what this is saying is in row 3 column 1 it's going to input a 1 and in row 2 column 2 is a 2 and this is all inside a 4 by 4 matrix so that's what you get and you could still multiply this by another matrix that is a 4 by 1 so I don't know 1 2 3 4 and 
you could still do the same operations. So uh, in conclusion, uh, using sparse, using a sparse matrix is just a lot faster, saves time. Uh, you could use more complex uh, numbers. It's a lot faster than typing a whole bunch of zeros everywhere. And you still have the same functions as you did before with full matrices.